Hello and welcome back to Financial News and Your Money. My name is Paul Munical and I am a financial advisor um, with Ameriprise Financial and my co-host Ron Jankowski is off this week. So I'm going to handle the show today by myself. Today being, believe it or not, August 1st, um, summer is flying by and soon enough it will be freezing cold and we will uh, we'll miss this warm, hot, humid weather. Um, today I'm going to start out the show by just recapping um, Q2 earnings season, let you know how we're looking through the halfway mark. So I'm going to dive into the data and we'll take it from there. Um, the second quarter earnings season does continue this week with 152 S&P 500 companies on the docket. That's following last week's 175 companies that reported through last Friday. 280 or about 56% of the index had reported their results. So we're pretty much about halfway through leading into this week. Somewhat surprisingly, a strong 73% of companies have reported better than expected earnings per share versus an historical average of about 66 to 68 percent. Now with about 66 percent reporting better than expected sales. As a result, Q2 consensus estimates has improved. Analysts as surveyed by FactSet now look for S&P 500 companies to generate year-over-year -year earnings per share growth of about 5.9%. That's up from 4.9% last week. Now sales growth, meanwhile, has grown materially. Blended sales growth for the period is now set at a positive 12.5% versus last week's positive 10.7%. This is a remarkable pace, in our view, given the current conditions, including the headwind of a very strong U.S. dollar, and in comparison to sales growth's historical average growth rate of about 6%. As of quarter's end, around June 30th, consensus estimates were looking for year-over-year -year earnings per share growth of about 5% on sales growth of about 10%. So numbers are coming in much better than had been anticipated. Now, second half estimates are falling sharply though. So over the last week, estimates for Q3 and Q4 have come down by a combined $2.77. So the full year earnings per share estimate for 2023, meanwhile, has fallen by $2.70. So we do have positive news on uh, we're coming in, but you know forecasts for the second half of the year may not be as great as anticipated, but everything is up for change. Um, and these are just predictions for the end of the year, not actual data. Um, this is the part of the show where Ron would normally give you some bullet points on what's happening today before the market opens. So I'm going to go ahead and do his job for you. I've got four bullet points on the market update. So the U.S. stock market futures are lower this morning before the market opens after posting its best monthly gain since November of 2020. We were up 9.2% in July. Overseas, markets in Asia closed modestly higher in a narrow trading range, while European markets are broadly higher by about half a percent at midday. Looking at bonds, Treasury yields are modestly higher, with the two 10-year um, spreads stuck in the 20 basis point range. And if you are into Bitcoin, Bitcoin futures down about 4% in the pre-market, Copper is flat. Gold is up about half a percent. WTI crude down 1.5%, but that follows more than a 4% jump last week. And in general, the three main indexes, year-to-date performance, the S&P 500 down about 12% year-to-date with the Dow Jones Industrial Average down about 8%. 
and the NASDAQ industrial and NASDAQ uh, index down about 20% these numbers through Friday's market close. Um, so that's going to conclude the first half of today's show. Stay with me and I will be back with the second half of our show giving some tips for grandparents that are looking to spoil their grandkids. So stay with us and I'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. And as promised, I've got four tips out there for the grandparents at home who potentially want to spend some money on their grandkids. So, you know, many grandparents spend money on their grandkids, <clears throat> whether by chipping in on big expenses like tuition bills and travel expenses or covering smaller costs like meals and holiday gifts. The in, uh, inclination to be generous is understandable and many seniors say it brings them joy to support or even occasionally spoil their grandchildren. But lavishing them with gifts shouldn't come at the expense of your, um, your grandparents' own financial security. If you're seeking to find the balance between supporting your grandchildren and ensuring your own finances safety stay in shape, I'm going to give you four tips to keep all that in check. So one straightforward tip, know what you can afford, right? So no matter how much you enjoy splurging on your grandkids, your financial security should remain your first priority. There are many unknowns in retirement, including your longevity, the fluctuation of markets, and the impact of inflation on purchasing power. And we know that's a factor that's particularly pronounced at the moment with inflation rates at the highest we've seen in about 40 years. So spend and gift within your means to maintain your own financial health in the future. Point number two, determine if you're giving or loaning. This one is pretty important to be clear about. If you're giving a gift, understand current federal tax rules, which are based on the calendar year 2022. If you can give up to 16,000 to each family member before the federal gift tax is applied. If you are married, both you and your spouse may gift $16,000 for a total of $32,000 and make certain the recipient knows it's a gift for their own tax purposes. So there is no uncertainty about whether or not they need to pay you back. If you are loaning money to a grandchild, be very specific about the terms and repayment. And consider having a written document that both parties sign and date. This can help safeguard your financial situation and ensure both of you are on the same page now and in the future. So whether it's a gift, check with your tax advisor on your exclusion limits. And whether it's a loan, it may sound strange to have a document written out, but everything's, everyone's on the same page. Everyone understands that it's a gift and understands how it's to be repaid. Oftentimes that can avoid conflicts down the road. Number three, you may want to just be open about it and talk about it with your family. Many people, they do tend to shy away from discussions about money and their finances with their family. If you'd like to help support your grandchildren or save for future goals like college or maybe a down payment on their future home, be sure to communicate this with their parents. This can help your adult children do a better job with their own financial planning. For example, if the parents of your grandchild know how much you are expecting to contribute to their child's education in college, they may be able to decrease the amount they're allocating to say a 529 college plan and invest more towards their own goals, um, such as their own retirement. So oftentimes in these situations, communication is key. Um, fourth and final point I'm going to hit today is establish your boundaries. So even if you want to help your grandchildren financially, depending on their situation, it may not be appropriate to do so. 
or to repeatedly provide support. Everyone appreciates help, but your grandchild needs to learn financial independence. There can be value in letting them live within their own means. Keep in mind that um, this can sometimes be tough to see, but financial lessons you have learned in the past as you made your own way as a young adult and the pride that came with successfully overcoming such challenges. So in conclusion, if you want to provide financial support to a family member, but haven't incorporated it into your own overall financial plan, consider consulting a financial professional and a tax professional. He or she can help you evaluate your financial needs and goals and create a strategy. A clear and realistic understanding of your own financial picture can help you identify how much you can comfortably give and stay on track with your own financial goals. And as I conclude every show, if you're working with a financial advisor, that's great. Um, if you're not, or if you're looking for a second opinion to the person you're working with, feel free to give me a call directly. Um, my number is 708-226. 3412. And that is going to conclude today's episode. Um, I appreciate everyone who is watching at home, and um, we will be back next week with a new topic and new uh, news updates. So, wish everyone a great week, and uh, we'll see you back next week with new topics.